So we're going to begin the Sikha in Chelik Yeralev, Parshas Tetzave, Sikha Beis. This is a Sikha about the Choyshen, specifically about the Urim Vitumim, which is the Shem Amafurish in the Choyshen, which Rashi explains in this week's Parsha. And regarding the fact that that Urim Vitumim was missing in the Choyshen that the Kayan God wore in the Bayez Sheni. And the Rebbe will explain according to Pshutish Shal Mikra how Rashi teaches what this Urim Vitumim is. And more generally, what the pshat in the word mishpat that the Torah uses in connection to the chayshin. The pasuk v'nasata el chayshin ha mishpat es aurim v'satumim goymer. The farish Rashi es aurim v'satumim. What's the pshat of aurim v'tumim? Who ksav sheim amafurish? This is a ksav that has a, has the Shem's explicit name. And it was placed inside the folds of the Choshen. Through this Urim V'tumim, the words of the Choshen were illuminated and it brought perfection to the words of the Choshen. In the second Besam Mikdash, there was the Choshen, the Kayan Godel had this beggar, the Choshen as well. Because the Kayin Godel cannot serve in the Beis HaMikdash, missing any of the Begadim. This Shem, the Urim V'tumim, was not there inside the Chayshin. It's because of this Ksav that was inside of the folds of the Chayshin, that the Chayshin is called Mishpat, Judgment. As you see later, it says that the Chayshan, the questions will be asked of the Chayshan, and the Chayshan would give a judgment, the words of the Chayshan would give the message through this Shem HaMafeirish, the, the, the letters that were inscribed in the Chayshan would shine and would give the message that uh, was an answer to the question that was asked from the Chayshan. So there are the following problems with this Rashi. Rashi only comes to explain Pshat and the Pasik. If so, the question over here on this Pirish of Rashi, and especially that Rashi speaks at such a length, what is the Choshen in the second Besa Mikdash? So, why is Rashi coming and explaining this? How was there a Choshen in the second Besa Mikdash? Rashi has to explain regarding the history of what happened in the second base of Mikdash. That's not a gate to the Pshat of the Posik. Rashi comes and proves the fact it's impossible to say that the Kayin God was without a Chayshin. Why is all of this necessary to explain for the Pshat of the Posik? Bayes, another problem with this Rashi is Kavanas Rashi Bechol Mokim Lefarish Teves Hakosav Shumatikam. Rashi always comes and explains those words of the Pasik that he actually quotes. He quotes the words of the Pasik and then he explains those words. If so, why does Rashi here, where Rashi is quoting our Pasik, explaining this Pasik here? So why is Rashi explaining that that this explains a Pasik that it says later on in Parshas Pinchas? That that's the pshat over there of mishpat urim, the judgment that came from this urim v'tumim. The mekaymai bepirish apasik ahu. Rashi should wait to explain this over there when he comes to that pasik. Why does he explain it here? Gimel, a third question is loizubul vachei mekaymai kan. Not only is this not the place where Rashi should be explaining this, eladarav. On the contrary, bir zeu bestira bestira hula mashakosav Rashi lefneiza. The explanation Rashi says here seems to contradict what Rashi said before. If the term Choshen Mishpat means that it, it's called Choshen Mishpat only because of the Ksav that was inside of the folds of the Choshen, so if you don't have that ksav shem amafurish inside of the chayshen, so it's not a chayshen. It's not called chayshen mishpat anymore. It's missing that ability to give the judgment. So if so, there's room to say the bemikta sheni the chayshen did not have this ksav. So the kain was lacking something in this baggage. 
It's the exact opposite point that Rashi is making beforehand that in the time of the second base of Mikdash, the Chayshen, the actual Chayshen, the Bege, the Kayin had, what was lacking was just what was inside in the fold, the Ksav. But then Rashi makes the point that no, that this name, Chayshen Mishpat, is our shame that Ksav. So if you don't have the Ksav, so then it's not called Chayshen Mishpat. So the in fact, the Kayin is lacking in the Chayshen Mishpat at the time of Bayes Shaini. Later, in this Pasik, at Mishpat Bnei Yisrael, the Pasik says, Mishpat Bnei Yisrael. Shabbat Pasik says, Kosov Rashi, what's Pshat Mishpat Bnei Yisrael? That the Choshen was Mishpat Bnei Yisrael. So Rashi says, two Pshatim. <coughs> First Pshat, Dvarim Shehe Nishpatim V'Nechachem Al Yodai. The Choshen was used for judgment, for a final conclusion. When there was a question that was asked by the, to the Choshen, should it be done, should it not be done? So the Choshen gave an answer, a conclusion, what should be done. Then Rashi says another pshat according to the Medrash. Because the Choshen atones for any judgment that justice was not done there. So therefore, Nikra Mishpat, the Chayshen, which atones for those judgments, is called Mishpat, Hashem Slichas Mishpat, because it atones for the judgment. Gam, be Pirushi Zekosha, here as well, it's difficult to understand. Aleph number one, Beis Pirushi Meilu, Kvar Omram Rashi Lefneza, both of these Pshatim, Rashi already said earlier on, the Parsha Zuatzma over here in this Parsha itself, Al Chayshen Mishpat, the first time the Torah refers to the Chayshen, as Chayshen Mishpat, Rashi over there said both Pshatim. Why does Rashi have to say this again over here a second time? If we already know the Pshat of Chayshem Mishpat. Beis, another difficulty is, There, the first time around when Rashi brings this, it's in the opposite order. From the way it said later on over here in this Rashi. Aleph, over there, the first Pshat Rashi brings is, the first pshat is that the Chayshen comes to atone for justice that was not served. And only the second pshat, Beis, Dover Acher, Mishpat means, clarifies its words, and whatever it promises turns out to be true, that it clarifies its words, that it gives a clear message of how one should conduct himself and a clear promise of how things should be done. So there Rashi says it in the opposite order of the way he says it here. So that itself needs a question, it needs explanation. So In addition to the obvious question, why does Rashi switch the order of his words? Rashi's words are of course precise in every detail, including the order. It sort of brings a contradiction when Rashi changes the order of the two pshatim that he quotes. Why is that? Hapirishem amidei Rashi l'rishayna. When Rashi brings one pshat first, oisay teifis ki ikepirusha. He's bringing it first because Rashi considers that to be the main pshat. Vimkein chiluf asayde. When Rashi changes the order, machluf kviyas hapirishay ikri. So he's switching what he considers to be the main pshat of the words. In this case, chayshem mishpat. Magam shulekamonu maybe es pirushi asheni b'tu medrash agoda. Not only does Rashi switch the order. Here, in the second time around, Rashi actually says that the second pshat is only a medrash. So what Rashi is saying with that is, This second pshat cannot really fit into the Pasik in its simplest pshat. As Rashi himself says in other places, that he brings a drash from a medrash in order to explain the pshat, but it's not really the pasha to pshat of the Pasik. So not only does Rashi bring it a second, but he points out that this second pshat is not the simple pshat of the Pasik. Kimach masakaisha bepirushirish, and Rashi will bring a second pshat of a medrash because of a difficulty in the first pshat. Shakal kulei al derech pshat. It is the first pshat is the more simpler literal pshat of the Pasik, but there still is a difficulty with that pshat. Mochrech lahavi pirush medrash agada. So Rashi has to bring a second pshat from the medrash. Sheni al derech apshat legamri, which is not a pshat according to pshat, it's not the pshat of the pasuk. But on pipirush ele el earlier, the first time around al chayshem mishpat when Rashi touches the word chayshem mishpat heviyoy kipirush rishon veikri. There Rashi brings this very same pshat that he here he says is only an agoda. There it's the first and main pshat of the pasuk. How could this be? What changed from before to now? 
So the Rebbe explains as follows. So here the Rebbe will point out that Rashi is really coming to answer the place of where this Pasuk appears when the Torah describes the Choshen. The, the place where it comes is, is unusual and Rashi has to answer what happened over here. Abir, because, eh, so to explain all of this, when you look at the beginning and then the continuation of this parasha, the Torah already says all the details of how the Choshen should be made, the materials, the measurements, and the stones, and how it was placed inside, and all the details. The Torah sort of concludes the parasha and says, V'nasa Aaron and Aaron will wear this Choshen, the Choshen HaMishpot Alibai, the Choshen HaMishpot is worn at the, by the heart. So it's, it's Shebezen Nigma L'Choyle, calling in a Choshen. Seemingly this concludes the whole parsha of the Choshen, of all the details of making it, even concluding with the fact, and now it's done, it's complete, and Aaron wears it. Following that, the Torah comes back as if it forgot a detail, and it comes back to say, V'nasato, El Choshen HaMishpat, Es HaUrim, Ves HaTumim, you have to place inside the folds of the Choshen, the Urim V'Tumim, and V'nosa Aaron Es Mishpat Nei Yisrael Goymer. And Aaron HaKayim will carry this Choshen together with Urim V'Tumim inside. So the question is, what happened over here? Why does it tell you to leave out this detail and say that Aaron HaKayim wears it and then comes back and says that you have to place this Urim V'Tumim inside the Choshen? So since the Urim V'tumim is not mentioned earlier as one of the details how you make the Choshen, it comes after the Torah concluded. As a separate and special thing for itself. So it's understood from the order of the Pasuk. It's not part of that very Choshen, the object of the Choshen itself. It's not part of the instructions the Torah gives about the details of how to make the Choshen. It's a separate thing that was placed inside the Choshen, it's separate to the essence of the Choshen itself. It's an additional thing, not separate necessarily, but an additional thing to the Choshen itself. And therefore, after Rashi explains what this Urim V'tumim is. First Rashi has to tell us the meaning of Urim V'tumim. But after Rashi explains, This is the Ksav of the Ebesh's name that was placed inside the folds of the Choshen. Shal Yodoy who made Vorov, and now through this Ksav, the Choshen's words will shine. So the Ksav inside affects the Choshen itself, that the words and the message of the Choshen shines. The Mizen Nira is now based on this interpretation of Urim Vitumim, it would seem. It's an integral part of the Choshen itself. The Urim V'tumim completes the Choshen. It causes that the Choshen should be able to give its message. The completion of the Choshen is what's placed inside the fold that, it, that through it, the Choshen is able to give its message. If so, This is in, comes in contradiction to what's obviously understood in the Pasik that the fold, what's in, what was inside the fold, the Urim V'tumim is separate. It's an additional thing. It's not the Choshen itself. So what's Pshat over here would seem that the Urim V'tumim is an integral part for the Choshen itself. So therefore, Mam Shech Rashi Liyashev Kushizu, therefore Rashi continues to answer this question. Rashi is coming to answer the question that's Negea to us to understand the Pasik. He's not just coming to tell us a historical fact about what happened in Bayez Sheni when the Kayin did not have the Urim V'tumim. The Kayin wore the Choshen, Shei Efshel Kayin Gadol is Mechusa Begadim. Because a Kayin cannot serve in the base of Mikdash if he's lacking one of the clothing. The Shem inside the fold was not there. So this proves the fact that it's not part of the very garment, the essence of the garment itself. As we see that in the second base of Mikdash, he did not have that Urim V'tumim. And still, it's not considered that the Kayin was lacking that Beged. He had all the Shemayin Begadim, including the Chayshin. So Rashi is bringing this to prove to you and demonstrate the fact that the Urim V'tumim is, is an additional feature to the Chayshin. 
It's not part of the essence of the Cheshun itself. However, here Rashi continues because this itself needs an additional explanation. If, as we said before, what is the function of the Oren V'tumim? The Oren V'tumim is there to give, to allow the Cheshun to give its message. So if so, isn't it an integral part of the very object of the Cheshun itself? So Rashi proved it from the second base of Mikdash that it must be that the Chayshan could be the Beged there without it though, but it still needs an explanation. Why would the Urim V'tumim not be something that should be integral and therefore prevent the ability to have this Beged of the Chayshan if you don't have the Urim V'tumim inside? Like all of the other parts of the Chayshin, the stones in the Chayshin, if you're missing one stone, then the Beged is incomplete and you can't wear the Beged. Each one of the individual stones that are in the Chayshin are Ma'akiv in the Chayshin. If there is missing one stone, you can't wear it. Why wouldn't we say the same thing regarding the Urim V'tumim? Urim V'tumim, Hinam L'chayri, Inyin Ikri Ba'chayshin. It's not just like one of the stones, but it's a very important part of the Chayshin. That's what gives, that's what allows the Chayshin to give the message that it's Meir and Metamim, the per perfect message that it gave. So it's, it's, it's lacking, it's completely lacking. So therefore Rashi explains, so here's the third point that Rashi says, that Val Shem Oisiyak Sav Hukori Mishpat. It's because of this ksav, because of what's inside in the folds, that it's called mishpat. That's only integral for the mishpat of the chayshen. Hainu shalakin yina mishpat. The mishpat aspect of the chayshen. Shehu dava noisa falatsam chayshen. It's an additional feature to the very object, to the very garment or ornament of the chayshen. Tali ba ksav shal orin v'tumim. It's dependent on this ksav inside, which is the orin v'tumim. The very chayshin itself, habeged, as a garment, to wear as a garment, the garment is complete without having the urim v'tumim, like we said before in the second base of Mikdash, the kain gadol is not lacking in any of his begadim if he's wearing the chayshin without the urim v'tumim. So on one hand, the urim v'tumim is very integral to the chayshin, only through it could the Chayshin give its message. However, it's not integral to the Chayshin as a beget, as a garment. It's integral to the feature that this garment had to give a judgment, to give a message. And therefore, the actual beget itself is complete without that Urim V'tumim. So we have that distinction here that clarifies the whole Indian and we understand clearly where Rashi says all the points he says. So this is now the reason why The Teir first tells us regarding the bag, the garment, the details of what this garment is, what it includes in it. And then the Teir completes it. This completes the parash of the Chayshin itself, telling us what the Chayshin, the actual garment itself is. And therefore, Messiah Makasov and Mavayer and Yonev et Achlisa Shel Achayshen, the 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 pasuk concludes and says what this garment is and what the purpose of the garment is as well. Venasa Aaron and Shmuel Ben Yisrael. This garment is about carrying the names of the Yidden that were inscribed in the stones. Lezikara in Lufnei Hashem Tomit, so that their memory should be in front of Hashem constantly. But v'rak achrei ze ba'at zivay ala unu v'tumim shuchayshen amishpat. Then comes an additional command. It's not that one detail was forgotten and the Torah gets back to it. It's an additional feature of the Chayshen that's connected to the Mishpat. It's an additional feature to the very Chayshen itself as a garment. And here it's a different objective. That Aaron HaKayin carries the Mishpat of Eden. This is an additional feature that the Kayin is carrying a Chayshen that's able to give a message to Klal Yisrael. Rabbi continues now to get back to the question we asked before about Mishpat, that Rashi brings two Pirushim about Mishpat, but he switches the order. The first time he brings it in one order, the second time in the opposite order. What happened over here? Why does Rashi switch the order the second time around? Fitting and according to what Rashi says over here. 
in the beginning of this pasuk. Where Rashi explains that what is the Urim Vitumim? It's what's inside the folds of the Chayshin. And Rashi says that in connection to that shame, the, what's inside the fold of the Chayshin, that's what the name Mishpat is about. Like we explained, there's two parts to the Chayshin. There's the Chayshin as a garment. And then there's the Chayshin that has the feature of the shame of the Ksav that causes the Chayshin to be a Mishpat, that it's able to give a message. So now in continuation to that, Mefarish Rashi Gamkem Bipirushe Harishoin. So here Rashi explains in his first Pshat, what it says in the continuation of the Pasuk, Es Mishpat B'nei Yisrael, what's the Pshat Mishpat B'nei Yisrael? That the Pshat of Mishpat is that this gives a judgment and a message, a clarity, a conclusion. So from that we understand that the Mishpat refers to the Urim V'tumim that gives the message. In continuation what Ashi said in the Pshat at the beginning of the Pasuk. So now we can understand why Rashi over here says that this is the main pshat of the word mishpat because only according to this pshat nitn is it possible to explain the pshat of the canal because the whole point over here is Rashi is coming to clarify the order of the psukim. The Torah is dividing, making the Chayshin into two parts. There's the Chayshin as a garment, and then there's the additional feature of the Chayshin, which is the Mishpat, which is the Urim V'tumim. So only according to the Pshat, that Mishpat means the judgment in the sense of the message that the Chayshin is able to give through the Urim V'tumim, do we understand that the Urim V'tumim is an additional feature. It's not the Chayshin itself, it's the Mishpat of the Urim V'tumim. That's why Rashi over here brings this as the first and main Pshat. To explain the order of the psukim, which is not the case in Rashi earlier on, the first time around, when Rashi comes to explain mishpat the first time, there there is yet nothing forcing us to say that the word mishpat is related to the urim v'tumim placed inside the chayshim. So therefore, there. There Rashi wants to translate in the first pshat the word mishpat in its most literal sense, as far as the word itself is concerned. Miloshin din. The word mishpat means a judgment. Then to explain it like it is in the second pshat that it's not about a judgment; it's about clarifying and giving over a message, giving an answer to a question that was asked. That's not the simple pshat of the word mishpat, which means judgment. There, when Rashi is just dealing with what is the more simple translation of the actual word, there Rashi first brings the pshat, that the word mishpat means literally we're talking about judgment, because the chayshen brought atonement for any place where judgment did not serve justice. That's the Pashat Pshat as far as the word itself is concerned right there before we know about the Urim V'tumim and the problem that will come up later. Only as a second Pshat as Rashi say, that it's possible also to say that the Mishpat means that it gives a clear message to the people that are asking a question. But over there Rashi is dealing with what he's explaining there that as far as the Taich of the word is concerned, the simple Pshat of Mishpat is that it means judgment. Omnam, however, mitam ze atzma. It's for this reason itself. That in the actual translation of the word, it's difficult to say that it means that it's a message that it gives. Or as Rashi explains here, that it's that they are judged and they get a conclusion, judgment in the sense of that they get the message and the conclusion of how to do things. So that's one difficulty with saying the pshat that mishpat would mean the message that comes out of it, relating to the Urim V'tumim. The gam, another difficulty is, ki v'nsha chayshen nikra b'shem chayshen ha-mishpat, gam terem shenosnu b'toyches Urim V'tumim. The Torah refers to the chayshen as a chayshen mishpat earlier on, when it talks about making the chayshen as a beged, before it even mentions the Urim V'tumim. The Torah will repeat again, v'hoi mishpat l'bnei Yisrael, that the Urim V'tumim will bring it to be a mishpat. But the Torah refers to it as a mishpat even the first time around when it's talking about the Begit itself. 
So therefore, ain Rashi mistapik bepirushi harishen al pasik don. Even here, when Rashi has a reason to say that we don't only look at the translation of the word, but we look at the context of the parsha, and we can see that it makes more sense to say that mishpat refers to the ulim v'tumim, and it does not mean mishpat in the literal sense as a judgment. It refers to the Urim V'tumim that was inside, that gave a message, but even here, that's not smooth. This pshat is not 100% clear, because there are these two difficulties here, and therefore Rashi has to bring a second pshat. Shemishpat b'nei Yisrael, hayna Urim V'tumim. So therefore Rashi cannot just bring this first pshat, that Mishpat b'nei Yisrael refers to the Urim V'tumim. Umaysef pirishayni da chayshen nikra mishpat al shayim shemachapar al mohof seyadin, that the, the mishpat, the chayshen, comes to atone for any judgment that wasn't uh, done justly. The lefizem yoshev yaiser pirush shal mishpat. According to this second pshat, the actual word mishpat makes more sense kemashmoi in the simple meaning of the word that it just means judgment, and the pasuk already brings it before, even before it ever mentioned the word in v'tumim. Ella, however, this is only a second pshat. Why is this only a second pshat? As far as looking in the continuation of the Psukim, it's very difficult to say this Pshat, that the word Mishpat means that the Chayshin atones for bad judgment. Ukanal, as we explained before, If the Urim V'tumim doesn't stand out as a separate feature of the Chayshin, the Chayshen is one thing, Chayshen Mishpat. The Mishpat just means that it atones for bad judgment, but Mishpat is not a separate feature at all. So Urim V'tumim is not a separate feature either. So it should have been included as part of all the details where the Taita describes the Chayshen itself. So because, according to this Pshat, that difficulty is not answered, L'chein Kosav Rashi, so therefore Rashi says, Shepirushe Zeh Hasheini Hulifi Medesh This second Pshat, that Mishpat here means simply judgment, that's according to Medrash, but it doesn't fit into the Pshat of the Pasik. The Ime Yois, although Shebeprat Echad Karavu Yois Ale Pshat HaMikra. From one standpoint, this, this pshat of mishpat meaning judgment is actually closer to the pshat of the Pasik. Like that I've explained before, as far as the translation of the actual word, this is closer to pshat. However, on the other hand, looking at the whole parsha and how the Torah divides the description of the Chayshin into two, there's the Beged, and then there's the additional feature of it being mishpat, that wouldn't be answered according to this pshat. So therefore it's brought as a second shot, as a shot from the Medrash, not as a first and main shot. Now the Rebbe concludes here, after we're finished explaining the shot of the Pasuk according to Rashi, that we can now also understand according to Rashi what his opinion was regarding the Chayshan in the second Beis HaMikdash, even though that's not the objective of what Rashi came to explain it. Rashi only brought the way it was done in Bayesheni in order to answer the question in the Seder of the Psukim, as the Rebbe explained. But we also understand Rashi's Shitta regarding the Chayshin. We could also understand Rashi's opinion as far as it is according to the Halacha of the Chayshin in the Gemara and not only in the Pshat of the Pasuk. How was the Kain able to serve in the Beis HaMikdash, in the second Beis HaMikdash, if he was missing the Urim V'tumim? He was missing the clothing. And this is something that, that's, that's brought up in the Gemara, and the Rishayim talk about it, as the Rebbe points out in the footnote, footnotes here. There's the Rambam, there's a the Teisvist, there's many Mepharshim that talk about this. But according to Rashi, the answer is simple. The fact that the Chayshin is lacking the Urim V'tumim inside of it, that doesn't touch, that doesn't affect the Chayshin as a Beged itself, mishpat. that's only an additional feature, which is the Mishpat of the Chayshin. The Kain Gadol is not lacking in his wearing of any of his clothing when he's lacking the Urim V'tumim, as Rashi clarifies over here. In the Ha'aris, the Rebbe brings that there are different ways how to solve this. The Ari Shainan that say that even in the second base of Mikdash, there was an Urim V'tumim inside of the Chayshin, it's just that it didn't work. It didn't give that message and the words shining the way it was in the first base of Mikdash, but the Urim V'tumim had to be there because they hold that it was an integral part of the Chayshin. Then the Rebbe brings the Rambam's opinion that according to the Rambam, the Urim V'tumim are the stones in the Chayshin, which is obviously an integral part of the Chayshin. It's not an additional thing that was placed inside the fold of the Chayshin. 
So there are different pshatim regarding this, different pshitas in the Rishayinah, there's a big arichas over here in the Haaras. But according to Rashi, it's very simple and clear. The chayshin itself, there's the chayshin as a baget, as a garment or as an ornament, and then there's the chayshin that has an additional feature to give the message through the Urim Vitum. So now, what we can take out of Rashi on a deeper level, according to Chesidus, and a, a, a deeper level in Pnimiyas Atayre, so Mavur B'Chesidus. It's explained in my modern Chesidus, Shachilok Ikri, Shebe Mikdash Rishon and Mikdash Eni. The primary difference between the first and second Beis Hamikdash, Asher Mishum Zeh Chaser Heidvarim BeMikdash Eni. The Gemara lists five things that were missing in the second Beis Hamikdash that were there in the first Beis Hamikdash. So it says actually in Chesidus that the difference was lehoya kol kach b'madrega is gilio lekushe b'mikdash atzmai. As far as the actual presence of the shchina and the revelation of the Eibushter in the Beis Hamikdash itself, that's not the main difference between the first and second Beis Hamikdash. Kigam b'mikdash asheni hoya gilui pchinas bino k'moy b'mikdash harishen. The level of bino, which is the description of the level that was revealed in the first Beis Hamikdash, that level was revealed in the second Beis Hamikdash as well. Kiim, where is the main distinction between the first and second Beis Hamikdash? Sheikra chilakoya ba'am shochas giloy b'chinas bina b'gvulin. How this level of bina that's revealed in the first Beis Hamikdash affects and comes out into gvulin, into the borders outside of the Beis Hamikdash. Shabbayis sheni in the time of the second Beis Hamikdash lehoya yachayles lahamshich b'chinas bina ela legabe atzmai v'loy b'gvulin. The Shechina that was there in the Beis HaMikdash was confined to the place of the Beis HaMikdash itself and it didn't extend outward in the same way like in the first Beis HaMikdash to the Gvulin and to the Yerushalayim and to the rest of Eretz Yisrael and to the rest of the borders of Eretz Yisrael. That's the main distinction. But as far as the Beis HaMikdash itself, the presence of the Shechina was the same. Now the Rebbe brings this idea and applies it to the Chayshin and what Rashi says here. Fi Pirish Rashi, now based on what Rashi says, Kain hua inyin gam Based on what we, the way we explained Rashi, we could say regarding the Chayshin as well, there's two aspects to the Chayshin. There's the Chayshin itself, the Beged of the Chayshin, and then there's the message that the Chayshin gives for people, for their behavior, how they should do things. As far as the Chayshin itself was, is concerned, the Chayshin itself is there in the second Beis HaMikdash, the same as in the first Beis HaMikdash. So just as we say regarding the Beis HaMikdash in general, that the first and second Beis HaMikdash, as far as the Shechina that's there in the Beis HaMikdash, is the same, the same with the Chayshin. The Chayshin itself is there. Hello, she inyana mishpat, the aspect, the additional feature of the Chayshin, which is the mishpat of the Chayshin, using the Chayshen as a judgment in the sense of getting a message and a clarity of the behavior that people need to know what to do coming from the Chayshen. The effect that the Chayshen has regarding the conduct of Yidin in the world in general, outside of the Chayshen itself. This is what was lacking in the second Beis HaMikdosh. However, the, the Chayshin itself was there fully complete in the first base and second base of Mikdash as well. Now, similar we can say also, although of course not on the same level as in the second base of Mikdash, but the Rebbe emphasizes similar we can say also now, Bismana Golos, regarding the time of Golos. Omru Razal, Shechayshen Oisius Nochash. It says in Kisvi Arizal, that Chayshen are the same letters as the word Nachash, a snake. It says over there in Kisvi Arizal that Chayshen Mishpat, which refers to judgment, which is something which can be harsh, its original source comes from the Nachash, from a snake, which is the source of all negativity in the world. Nachash Akadmaini, the first snake that brought about Chetet Tzadas and all other problems in the world. That's on one hand. Uli on the other hand, Mavur B'Shem Rabbeinu Afraim Ibali Ataisvis, it's brought in the name of Rabbeinu Ephraim, which was one of the Bali Taisas, one of the Rishenim. Shechayshen b'gematriya Mashiach. The Chayshen itself is b'gematriya Mashiach. So we have two total opposites regarding what the Chayshen is related to. Whether the Chayshen is related to the Nachash or the Chayshen is b'gematriya Mashiach. So the Rebbe explains. V'hine b'zman golos now in the time of golos Shabam mipne chateinu, we are found in golos as a result of chateinu. Shesi bosom, his gabrus ha-meshche, the chivya al-nefeshel kiss the cause of all sins, is when the snake, the chivya, the snake, strengthens itself over the nesham of the Yid. Harayin yin ha-nochash u The nochash aspect, which is the source 
of connected to the Chayshen, that is what we are living with. That's the Matzev of Golas that we live with, and that's what's revealed. So the Golas Matzev, we see the Nachosh of the Chayshen. But the Chayshin as it is in the base of Mikdash, in its purest form, and of course in the sense that it's Mashiach, who behalem, that is concealed in the time of Golos. But what does this mean? What this means, in other words, is, The Chayshin really exists, the power of the Chayshin exists, even in the time of Golos. Because of Chata'enu, and we're in a matzah where the Nachash overcomes us, so therefore the Chayshen is in a different kind of a form. It comes out in a form where Yidna are in Golos and they're under the influence of the Nachash. That's the way the, we see the Chayshen today. But the Zayisi Avedisainu Bismana Golos, this is our, our, our Aveda today in the time of Golos, Lefaneach, Ulegales Esa Chayshen, Begamatri Meshech, Me'alomai to disclose and uncover and to reveal this Chayshen, which is really Mashiach, to reveal it from its hidden state. So the Chayshen again will be revealed, not only the Chayshen, but also the Mishpat aspect of the Chayshen, which is that the effect of the Chayshen, which refers to Mashiach, the effect of Mashiach will be revealed in the entire world. Hine Chayshen, who begematri Mashiach, the Chayshen, which has the same gematri as Mashiach, Shegile Chayshen, the Pchinas Chayshen Mishpat, and not only the Chayshen itself, but also the Chayshen Mishpat, maybe, and through this Aveda, we will bring, maybe the Gile Mashiach will bring the revelation of Mashiach, Ubekarev Mamish, speedily in our times.